Good afternoon, everybody, everywhere. Um, I'm so happy. I'm so, you know, I'm so proud to see a mix of attendees from everywhere. I see attendees from Cyprus and Greece, where is the snow right now? I got a great pictures from my colleague Nikos this morning. So take care guys and enjoy the snow. I see attendees from Israel, from Malta, Romania, and Moldova even. I see from Palestine, from Dubai, UAE, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. So thank you all for joining our second webinar in 2021. And uh, let's start. Guys, my name is Abdullah Ibrahim. I'm multi-point sales director. And today, we will focus on a great solution. But before that, I will start with a quick introduction about multipoint, two slides, three slides, and then I, my colleague, Mr. Jonathan, will present our services and solution. And then we will give the keys to our friends from Netrix, Evgenia, hello, Evgenia, good morning. And Dave, hello, Dave. They will present the wonderful a solution of Netrix. So Netrix is our webinar today. This is the subject. Before that, who is Multipoint? So Multipoint is a leader a cybersecurity distributor in EMEA. Uh, Multipoint founded by Mr. Ricardo Resnick, one of the great businessmen in 2009. So multipoint are distributing many and a big huge of uh, software uh, portfolio, maybe more than 30 uh, leader uh, vendors, uh, all, the, all the solutions for everything. Um, in multipoint group, we have around seven uh, branches or representative offices. As you can see in USA, Greece, Cyprus, Malta, Israel, Dubai, and et cetera. We are looking to expand our activities also in, in different regions. Um, the new uh, office we established was in Dubai beginning of this year. And we have a new team located in Dubai. So wishing them a good luck. In multipoint, we are offering uh, solutions for all the market, for the small and medium and enterprise accounts. We have uh, more than 300 active wrestlers all over the regions. And we have a mix of references in the banking sector, in the telco sector, in the academy sector, and et cetera, and et cetera. Uh, beginning of 2021, Multipoint and NGCOM, NGCOM a Spanish uh, cybersecurity distributor, signed a strategic alliance agreement. So both distributors and both uh, customers of both distributors can get benefits from shared uh, resources, solutions, and tools, um, and wish to have and to see this in the coming weeks. Uh, now, guys, I will give my colleague, Mr. Jonathan, to continue presenting our services and our uh, portfolio. So uh, good luck, Jonathan. Good luck, Netrix. And thank you, guys, for joining our webinar. Uh, please ask questions through the Q&A. Uh, every time you can share also uh, send emails and etc thank you again Jonathan go ahead thank you Abdallah can you hear me yes uh, please give me the control Abdallah okay thank you uh, first of all uh, gentlemen I would like to thank everyone who uh, joined our uh, webinar I am sure you'll find it very useful uh, please take it one uh, two slides uh, if uh, backward, uh, Abdallah, because I cannot control it. Ah, sorry. Or maybe you will be, give, give me the share. I would share this my screen, maybe. Yeah. 
I can stop and you can share or you can stop. decide to do what you want. The sharing. I will share my screen. Okay, I will stop sharing. Okay, can you see the screen now? Just a moment. Abdallah, are you, you sharing still your screen? So please give me the... You're controlling oh, the, okay. the screen, so. Okay, gentlemen, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So we'll start from the beginning. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining uh, our webinar. My name is Jonathan and I'm present here in uh, MultiPoints. I would like to thank Abdallah for uh, doing the uh, MultiPoint uh, intro and I will take it from here. First of all, a few words about uh, housekeeping. Please, please, I'm asking you to uh, share your uh, questions in the Q&A section and knowing the, knowing the chat section. And from now we are going to go forward. So, uh, Multipoint distribute a variety of high end cybersecurity solution that address all aspects of IT world. As you can see here in the slide, we are covering network security monitoring, risk assessment, compliance, access control, business continuity, encryption, and many more. Just to uh, get the impression here and to see all the, the vendors that you are representing, and we can see that by our very wide portfolio, we have the capabilities to empower and to, uh, to have a capability to improve your uh, organization's cybersecurity posture. We can contribute in any uh, arena of the IT world. As you can see here, we are focusing in the most leading solutions and uh, we are starting in the IT auditing, data classification and compliance by Netrix. We also have the vulnerability management by Tenable and Qualys, patch management, big fix, GFI, network and detection. As you can see, a lot, a lot of uh, vendors and solutions that are uh, focused in the high end of the IT arena. Some more uh, aspects of IT that we are covering. Beside of the distribution, which is very important, you know, to sell is very important. We also provide a very a high added value by professionals and the certified pre-sales and post-sales. That means that we can do the right sizing and the suiting the and tailor the solution, the required solution exactly to the requirements of the customers. We also have a post sales that can implement and uh, support the uh, solution that we are representing because we cover a lot of uh, vendors and uh, uh, products. We have a large team of uh, professionals that everybody, each one of them is expertise in his own products. So uh, we have the full solution, sales uh, cycles, pre-sales and the uh, post sales, of course. And uh, now I would like to uh, uh, provide uh, Netflix uh, professionals, uh, Evgenia and Matthew, and hand them over the presentation to focus in the Netflix solution. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, MultiPoint, for um, introduction. And thank you for arranging this webinar. Uh, definitely MultiPoint is one of the best distributors we ever had. So uh, my name is Evgenia Zotova. I am sales team leader for um, Eastern Europe, Israel, Greece, and Cyprus here with Netrix. Uh, just briefly, if you haven't heard about Netrix yet, uh, it's the company founded in 2006. And during these years, we have won many industry awards, more than 150. Uh, we have a customer base of uh, more than 7,000 uh, customers worldwide. 
And what type of companies rely on metrics? Well, there are banks and software businesses, there are pharmaceutical, healthcare uh, companies, educational institutions, and public organizations. Uh, no matter what business you're in, net using metrics can help you to achieve your data security, data management, and IT management goals. 68% of our customers say that the primary reason for choosing metrics was its functionality. 81% uh, of the respondents are able to detect anomalous user activity before it leads to a security incident. And almost 80% of the respondents state that Netflix is a strategic investment that helps them to improve overall security in the company. We are happy to announce that Netrix and StealthBits recently have joined their forces to offer data security and privacy solutions to organizations of any size in any region around the world. This combined entity will continue to offer its complete portfolio of more than half a dozen security solutions aimed at identifying and detecting data security risk, as well as protecting, responding, recovering from cybersecurity attacks. To address this challenge, Netrix and StealthBits will leverage each other's expertise to broaden product capabilities and improve user experience. For more information, please visit our website, www.netrix.com. There are many kinds of data, both structured and unstructured, which is placed both on-premises and in the cloud. And it's fair to say that you cannot protect something you don't know about. So Netrix helps to identify and classify sensitive, regulated, and mission-critical information so you can protect it accordingly. Do you know if your sensitive data is overexposed? Who has got access to that? What activity is going on around your critical data? Netrix Solutions helps you to answer these key questions and ensure that risk-appropriate security controls are implemented around your most valuable data. Plus, the platform enables you to detect abnormal activity early and respond before a threat turns into a breach. Moreover, Netrix can automatically reduce sensitive data exposure. Using automated workloads, you can move sensitive data into a quarantine area until someone can review it and take appropriate action. You can revoke excessive permissions from global, global access groups like everyone. You can reduct critical content in the documents, etc., etc. We got one solution for your entire environment. Regardless of where your data is located, Netrix got you covered. It identified structured and unstructured sensitive data in a wide range of data repositories on premises and in the cloud, enabling you to apply security policies consistently across them. We cover almost all Microsoft stack. We also do support EMC, NetApp, Nutanix, and Oracle. The platform provides a single pane of glass view of what's going on across your data storages, such as file servers, SharePoint, online and SQL server, and infrastructure systems, including, of course, Active Directory, Windows Server, and Office 365. I'm often got asked, why Netrix? And the first and foremost is fast time to value. The ability for us to go to our customers and install the solution in the morning and begin gathering these reports and the meaningful data in the afternoon is just not something our competitors can typically do. So all of the Netrix benefits mentioned on the slide, like low false positive rates with Netrix data classification, broad coverage of supported systems and repositories, third-party integration capabilities, and first-class technical support are designed to actually provide a better return of investment to our customers. And just a couple of happy customers mentioned on the slide of Netrix, whom we help to address their technical needs into business solutions. Like, for example, Credissimo, a leading European fintech group gained the following benefits by utilizing Netrix. They improved the visibility across their file servers. They streamlined the compliance. 
with ISO 27001, GDPR and their internal regular audits. They enhance control over admin activity and proving that the data entrusted to them is secure and all activity is aligned with compliance requirements was crucial for Credissimo to retain its reputation as a trustworthy financial partner. Or another example, Horizon customer. They needed a cost-effective cost solution to secure data stored across 500,000 folders and subfolders. And with Netrix, they optimized the discovery and classification of sensitive data. They accelerated search of regulated by GDPR information. And without Netrix, Horizon would have had to expand the IT team and hire four additional employees, paying them up to 80,000 pounds per year in total. Now I'm passing the stage to Dave Matthews, our pre-sales engineer, and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much, Evgenia. And just as you hand over the uh, screen sharing to me, I uh, just want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Dave Matthews, a solutions engineer here at Netrix. Uh, I'm a technical resource. So I support our partners like Multipoint uh, and customers as well, like yourselves, uh, with demonstrations, trials, proof of concept. Uh, we could be talking deployment planning or implementation as well. I'm basically a technical resource here to make sure that you get value from your time uh, with the platform. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through a demonstration of the Netrix platform itself. Uh, so I'll just ask if Jen, if you don't mind, stop sharing your screen. That'll let me take control there. Thank you. Terrific. Right, so, uh, so what we'll do is I want to just jump through Netrix. As you saw earlier, Evgenia showed us both the Netrix platform uh, and our integrations on the data classification side there, which comes in two parts within Netrix. So I'll take you through both these platforms and how they may lead you to better securing your data within your organization. Um, the first step would be Netrix Auditor. So actually collecting information around who's got access, what are they able to do with your, your data, what are they actually doing with the data, and then we jump over to classification where we start to identify where is the sensitive information, where should we be focusing our efforts in order to secure our, uh, our data, reduce our attack service, and, and similar there. When it comes to setting up Netrix Auditor and classification, it's very easy and straightforward. It's actually just an application that sits within your organization and it's an agentless deployment. That means when you set Netrix up, you don't need to go and deploy software across your entire organization. All you need to do is allocate an account with the appropriate credentials to be able to read and access the logs or the APIs or the syslog to pull in those events and activities and be able to crawl across the data to get the permissions and the status of, uh, of the, at that data whether it's at rest or uh, if it's sitting in a structured data source like a database, um, or we're looking at configurations of systems similar there. So to set up something like Active Directory, all I do is I create an account that's got permissions to be able to read uh, the domain controllers, and then Netrix can do the rest in the background for me. It can actually automatically adjust settings so that when it comes to actually adding in an Active Directory domain, all I need to do is select a domain, drop that in, and we've already picked up my local domain. If I was to add this in, within the next 10 minutes or so, Netrix will come back and tell me we're ready to go. We're collecting data. So immediately I'm able to see any changes made to user accounts within Active Directory. I can see uh, account statuses, what groups your users are members of. <clears throat> and I can also see uh, group policy changes, you know, password policies that we might have place in place, as well as login activity. See where users are coming in from within your environment. So we can know exactly where users are coming in, what are they doing with the data, um, how are they accessing it, and similar there. We actually present that information in a number of different ways through dashboards, reports, uh, search windows, and similar. But starting with the reports, if I was to go in and have a look at my Active Directory, I can very quickly drill into reports focused around change. So changes to different parts of the environment here where we're talking about users or computers. Uh, in my case, I might start with administrative users. Let's just go and look at those privileged user accounts or users that have privileged access within my organization. 
I could choose two groups. We could choose domain admins, and we could also choose perhaps my IT admins group, two groups that I know I have uh, privileged access. And I might say, as a starting point, I just want to see all changes that have been made over the previous 12 months, over, over the last 12 months from February 2020 until now. Uh, it helps if I have the right groups <laughs> set up there. And what Netrix does is it goes back through the audit log and it pulls that information in. So very quickly, you can get an overview of, I shrink that view there, who's been granted access to, in this case, domain admins. So I can see my domain admins group and I can see users were added there. So I have one user here, Mr. David Brent, was added by one of my administrators, Mr. Admin Jones, and he was dropped in there uh, right in the middle of July last year. And then I can also see when he was taken out, he was taken out by another administrator and that was towards the end of September. So you get this long view back over your organization um, over the changes and, and holding that information uh, so that if you do identify an incident or you identify there's been some changes made with Netrix, you're able to go and look at when those changes were implemented so you can understand what was your current security posture at any one time. We also have uh, on top of the change data, we also have another type of data set called state and time. So state and time is where we take a snapshot, a daily snapshot of your environment. So you can go and look at users and their groups. We can look at effective group memberships for an individual. So I could look at that user, David Brent, and I could say, show me which accounts or which security groups he is currently a member of, whether he's directly a member or if he's in a nested group. So if he's inherited memberships for privilege access and similar there. We can also take reports like uh, just simply getting an overview of show me all enabled accounts within my environment. This is quite a useful one because you can see uh, when an organization sets up users, you know, often we have user accounts that are being used, but we will have some people that will leave our organization or change roles or similar there. And we find IT is not always able to keep up. Perhaps we have an onboarding process, but when it comes to offboarding users, uh, removing them from the network, we might find we're not always staying on top of that. So with reports like this, we can take a look at all enabled user accounts. So I can see I've got 174 enabled user accounts in my organization, but show me any of those user accounts that are no longer active. And I can say, show me anyone who I haven't seen for 90 days or longer. And that quickly comes back and it shows me, I've actually got one of my administrators here that has been identified. They haven't been seen since the end of summer. So again, this is a privileged account within my organization uh, that does have privileged access. Now that person may have left the organization. They may be using the same username and password elsewhere. They may have been compromised elsewhere with, uh, with their credentials. So this is where you're able to stay on top of, you know, potential risks that might be showing up reports like this here. And what you can do is you could also say, actually, that's a very good point, Dave. Let's go and have a look at any accounts that are in the admin OU. So these are privileged users and I want to be alerted as soon as we see someone who is stale, perhaps we're going to say for 35 days or longer. And we can then subscribe to this report. So you can actually have reports like this set up so that they get sent to you as soon as they get populated. That allows you then to stay on top of risks or security gaps as they start to grow within, uh, within your organization. Um, and you can identify those early and, and head them off. Now, some of the other areas that we can also help in here is not only around users, uh, whether we're talking Active Directory, Azure, ADFS and similar, but we could also look at files, file activity. We can see who's making changes within your organization and you can focus on particular types of changes. Maybe we want to go and look at particular files and folders, um, areas of concern where we have sensitive data, or maybe we just want to look at all file replication, files being copied, duplicated, moved. I can get an idea of what's going on within my organization by simply saying, show me all changes made to files or, or file activity data for the last 24 hours. And very quickly, I get this overview of activity so we can see files who are being read. We can see files being modified, renamed, moved and similar there. And we can see what the file was that was changed who was the user that made the change, when that change was made, and we can also see which server it was located on and where that user was logging in from as well. And, and lastly, you get a little bit of an overview here of this activity. 
So one thing you'll notice is uh, if if you were looking for this activity or information using your native event logs or um, pulling pulling those events, you know, having to crawl through through those event logs, a lot of this, this activity isn't presented as clearly. Like it it can be a bit difficult when you're drilling into event logs, but that's what Netrix is doing here is we're actually taking that information. Uh, we're not just curating all events so you can sort by event ID, but we're curating. Uh, or collecting specific activities and events and then presenting that information back to you in a human readable format. So this allows you to stay on top of these changes, understand exactly what is going on. And if someone comes to you and says, I had some files I was working on last week, they're no longer visible or they're no longer present, you can quickly drill in. And again, using credentials or using filters up here, we can go and look at specific changes in specific areas to see where did that user's files go? Did somebody change the properties of them? Did they move them elsewhere? What happened there? Again, on top of activity, we also have that state and time data. So with state and time, we can look at things like permissions. Who's currently got access to our sensitive data in our NetApp uh, environment, perhaps? If I was to take this report and refresh it, I can very quickly see here's my NetApp data folder, and I can see who's got access through group memberships so i can see who's uh, inherited access because they're members of a particular security group but i can also identify users that might have direct or explicit access granted there as well again i can see a couple of users here we've got well the system account uh within the local server that's that's okay that's that's generally um uh and risk that can be quickly identified and and you know you can head that off by auditing any activity by this particular user account but I can also see this user here, Mr. Anton, has actually got direct access here on my NetApp data folder. With that, I might want to go and talk to the data owner to see, should this user have access? And if so, let's make him a member of the appropriate security group. Let's, again, just do a bit of cleanup within our data estate. So within those reports, what I would do is go and talk to the folder owner. Now the folder owner, if we look at the properties, that might be correct, but in many cases that, especially if we're talking Windows servers, that may be the IT admin that set up the folder. It may be the last person who edited data within that folder. So the other report that we could look at is potential data owners by folder. So potential data owners is where Netrix actually takes the activities or the audit activities and then helps us to sort out who potentially could be the data owner based on the number of changes and read events detected within those folders. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at my NetApp data folder, and I'm looking at the last 30 days of activity. I could change that time frame too. I could say, show me the most activity in that folder for the last six months or similar. But looking at this report, I can quickly identify uh, Miss Gilmore or Miss Joplin are the two most active users based on their changes or based on the number of reads and number of files they accessed within those folders. Um, and I could drill into those activities too to see exactly what they were doing. But these will be the people that I'd go and speak to to say, should this user, Mr. Anton, have access to this folder? Um, and in this case, we can also go back and review the changes he made. If he shouldn't have access, we could of course take that information and look at rolling back those changes as well. Now, that's all very good. We've got a very high level overview of activities, events, and changes taking place within our environment. But what about sensitive data? What about focusing our efforts around information that contains uh, you know, high value data, the sort of data that we want to make sure is protected. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're not uh, you know, providing excessive access um, uh, or, or giving someone unmonitored access and control. To, to sensitive files and, and data that potentially could be considered a risk to our organization if it was uh, shared or leaked externally. So in these cases, what we have is we have the data classification reports. These reports here look at sensitive files. And what we do is we categorize the data using different, uh, uh, different well, either predefined taxonomies, or you could also create your own custom taxonomies to identify sensitive data. And if I was to look at my file server, I can see here my accounting, engineering, finance, home folders, HR. I'm going to focus on my home folder here. And what I can see is I've got data that's uh, been uh, identified. We've got here PCI data, so credit card information. We've also got PII data, personally identifiable information. If we drill into the PII, we can see we've got five files 
I'm just going to change the view there so you can see the actual file names themselves. We've got five files that have actually been picked up here and I've made sure to name them conveniently. So these are actual real documents too. This is travel insurance. I've got my New Zealand driver's license. I've got some utility bills. That's a water bill, a Skype chat, and I've also got a UK passport located there as well. And you can see each of these files has been identified as containing PII. They're also subject to other uh, taxonomies or other classifications as well. In the UK, of course, we're looking at GDPR related data. So naturally you expect there's an overlap because both of them deal with sensitive information. Um, I've also got some DSAR data. So I've actually subjected myself to a data access request and I'll cover that more very shortly. But let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at how did we identify documents like the UK passport in the data classification console. So data classification itself is a separate module that will sit uh, on a separate server, but it will still sit within your environment. And what data classification does is first you add your data source. So again, we look at your file servers. We could be looking at Office 365 environment. We could be looking at other cloud-based sources or structured databases and similar there. But you add these data sources similar to what we do in, in uh, Netrix Auditor in that these are uh, data collection accounts. You don't need to deploy software to your file servers, to your database servers to collect data. We just need an account that ha has the appropriate permissions to be able to pull that data um, from those sources, to be able to read the content. And what Netrix will do is it will go and read the content. So it'll look at the message bodies. It'll look at uh, the, the content or the text within your documents. We also can perform OCR on any images, and we can also pull data back from the metadata as well. And we pull all this and index it so we can then start classifying. And what you can then quickly get from here is an overview of where is the sensitive data located. So we've got the top five sources within my environment, my public folder. I've actually got my, uh, my work email contains a bit of sensitive data. I've got an old PST file that I've also got a concentration of data in. I can identify uh, the ten top sensitive categories. So sensitive files by taxonomy, I can see I have a lot of GDPR and PII, personally identifiable data, but I also have a few credit card details in here and a few other categories there. And lastly, I can identify different terms. So terms are where we're actually, these are where we group the clues together to look for specific types of documents. And in this case, I'm looking here at UK passports. And if I focus on that and focus on UK passports within my home folder, we can see I identified two files in my home folder that contain UK passport information. The first is a Skype text chat. Now I know that that's got passport information because I had to go and review it. It actually was where I was talking to marketing at Netrix. I was attending an event and they had to book me a place to stay. So they needed some passport information. And I sent that through that got quickly picks, picked up in plain text. But the second document is a passport image. Uh, it's actually a scan of my passport. It's, it's an old passport or one that I lost. Uh, and had to cancel quickly and replace because I was due to fly in about a week from when I discovered it was missing. Of course, I found it uh, the day before I was due to travel. It was sitting in the jacket that I'd last wore when I was on a plane. So as, as you do, uh, at least we've got some valid data here to show. What I'm looking at here is the text that was extracted from the image. So this is an OCR scan that we've performed. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mix. It's a bit of a jumble of text there. There's a little bit of a data highlighted that was picked up, but just a plain text scan doesn't really give us much information about that. But if we actually go and look at the classification itself, we can see the clues that we use to identify this document. And this is how we classify documents. What we do is we have three sets of clues here. And the first thing I want to show you is a UK passport. This is the passport that we scanned. What you can see here is at the bottom, we've got a long form passport number. So this is a unique combination of letters and numbers with a few accents dropped in there in between as well. And then we've got some other clues in this document. There's a short form passport number, a nine digit number. And then we've got these other clues, date of expiry, date of issue, nationality, given names, surname, and similar there. So these are all the clues we are looking for within a UK passport. And that's what we've got done here is this first clue is that long form passport number. So this is that string of letters and numbers. 
is very unique uh, and not the sort of uh, string of characters that you expect to have confused with a contract number or an account number or something similar. So when we find a long form passport number, what we do is we give that document a score of 50 points and the threshold here is 50. So we say long form passport number, that's an automatic match to a UK passport, which tags this document as PII, GDPR, and any other classifications we might link uh, to this particular clue as well. But the second clue is the short form passport number, the nine digit number. So that's where we're looking for, uh, this could be, you know, that what well, this number could be confused with a telephone number. It could be a bank account number or something similar. So in that case, because it's a bit more generic, we say that this is only worth 40 points out of 50. This is an 80% match. And therefore I need to go and check my supplementary evidence or my hierarchical clues for other terms that might contribute and help us get us over that threshold. So what we're doing here is we're combining different clues to build context. So in that case, we're looking for those terms like nationality, official observations in all caps that's stamped at the top of a UK passport, the term passport or passport number, date of issue, date of expiry, date of birth, and similar there. Each of these clues has its own separate score associated with it as well. So some of these clues are worth more points than others. And that's where we use, we use these clues to build context. So we're not creating false positives or mismatching the documents within your organization. Once we match at least one of those clues or two of those clues, we'll give this document another 10 points, which combined with the short form passport number would get us over that threshold. And that gets us those 50 points. We can also use other clues here. We could use proximity. So we can say these other supporting clues need to be within so many characters or so many words of that short form passport number. We can use phonetics because we're performing OCR scans. We can say, well, if we confuse an I, an L, a one, a zero and an O, then we can also, uh, we can also replace those characters. Maybe we have different spellings for different words. We can do so there as well. And we can use other things like validation checks. So we can actually check for patterns within patterns. Uh, and a good example of that would be when you're scanning documents, if you find a document with three email addresses in, it's probably an email that's been sent out. <clears throat> but if you find a document with 100 plus email addresses in it, that's probably a contact form. So you want to classify that as confidential or, or above as well. You want to make sure that's protected. So that's where you can use context within the clues themselves. The other option you have as well is with these scores, as we scan your documents, if you find you've got some false positives, maybe you're getting mismatches because a VAT number, a tax number itself has been matched to this other number. You could say, well, if I find the term VAT in close proximity, I'm gonna give that document a score of negative 40. I'm actually gonna use other clues to take points off the document to improve the results. And it's not all guesswork. There's actually a clue suggested system as well, because Netrix is indexing this data, it means that it can also suggest clues based on that data that's been indexed. But on all in all, once you've classified those documents, you're able to then go and review them. And again, I can now click and see what calculations were made on my UK passport. I can see which clues were matched and how that was, how that was found or how that was discovered and identified. I also have the ability to go and search for documents now because I've indexed everything. So if I was wanting to look for all documents that contain my details in my home folder, I can do so here. I can go and perform a search looking for Dave Matthews and this finds everything that has been scanned there. You can see travel insurance. Uh, we've got mobile phone bills, credit card statements, things like that that I've dropped in. Amongst those documents, I've also got my daughter's fishing license and uh, my brother's resume. So if I was a sponsor or a referee on these documents, then perhaps uh, we're also bringing those back in the results. So maybe we're getting a bit too much. Maybe we need to refine that search. So within Netrix, you can do so. You can create working sets. You can take your documents and then you can group them together and start to filter. And I could filter by my current address, by postcode. So I can remove some of that excessive, uh, those excessive results there. And what I do there is uh, if I filter by postcode, I end up reducing these results down to four documents. So we can see there power bill, water bill, travel insurance, mobile phone bill. That's great. We were able to reduce those very quickly in a matter of seconds. Uh, one problem is 
I know there's a passport out there. So if I'm looking for documents related to me as an individual, I'm missing a passport because it doesn't contain my home address in the document. So that's where you could go and create your own custom searches. And this is what I did do for a customer who was looking for information related to individuals. In their case, it was a data subject access request, something that's required under GDPR, looking for documents related to an individual, whether they're a customer, an employee or similar there. So what I did was we created a, do a, a search rather, and we put in the clues such as my name, Dave or David, depending on if I owe you money or not. Uh, my postcode, both in the UK and in New Zealand. We've got my surname and we've also got uh, my year of birth as well. These were clues that were suggested by Natrix because of how frequent they appeared in the documents that I was searching for. Because this was a GDPR related search, I did also link these to GDPR. So I said, I'm only interested if they've already been tagged as containing GDPR related results. But in doing so, I quickly went from four documents back up to 20 documents. And you can see here, there's that Skype chat with my passport details, travel insurance, utilities, other, other utility bills. There's that UK passport. I think as we scroll down, we find things like my, uh, there's my driver's license and a few other documents there as well. I will say one thing that did come up is my wife's driver's license as well, because she shares my name, she shares my home address for the last 20 years. So very similar details there. So be aware of that, is that Netrix won't be that silver bullet. Uh, you know, we're still bringing context. So all of the context that you bring within those clues it, that helps us bring those results back so that you can find these documents quickly and then filter out anything without having to do a manual search, you know, sort of line by line within documents themselves. Once you have these results, you can export this out to uh, CSV so you can get an index to say where are these documents located, who's got access to them and similar there. You can also create workflows. So workflows are where you can actually migrate data to other data sources if you're migrating data to SharePoint. Maybe you want to reduce a bit of the old data, stale data within your organization. You can have Netrix automatically delete that. Or you could have Netrix simply tag these documents um, as confidential or internal use only. And you can use those tags with other solutions like DLP solutions. Or if you're using uh, Office 365, you could use Azure Information Protection and similar there. We can actually write back into their templates so that you can secure your data using those additional tags. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to show before we jump back into Netrix is beyond the security and beyond the classification of documents there, you do also have the option to go and identify documents uh, based on their metadata. So this is a requirement I've seen for customers recently where they want to identify data that is of a certain age. So we can say, well, we can find all documents that are less than a year old. We can find all documents that are older than seven years. Um, I've got here one that a customer asked for recently, which was, documents that are five to 10 years old. So we're just looking at the create date or the modified date within the document metadata to find documents that have either been created or modified within this set period of time. And you can use this to, again, put a classification tag on that to say, this is data that is older, but uh, and hasn't been modified or hasn't been accessed for a given period of time. You can use things like access dates as well if you needed to. And lastly, you can also identify files by type. So if you're looking for uh, access databases, Outlook PST files, uh, I had a customer come to us and say, I need to find illegal movies that are spread across my network because I've just I inherited this IT infrastructure and we've already found a few files there that we're storing that we should not be storing. So again, we go and look for particular file types over a certain size to help them identify that quickly and reduce their exposure there. And you can set all those different classifications. But going back into Netrix, of course, I've identified my PII, my UK passport. So going back into my reports, I can then look at activity related to PII. I can look at uh, the sensitive files permissions. So I can see, well, who's got permission? What are they able to do with that? Um, have we got potentially overexposed data? We can then look at how many users have access. Have we got 100 users have access to credit card information, but only you know, 2% of them are actually using that data. Do we need to reduce access to this data? Netrix has those reports to help focus your efforts there. Uh, also focusing efforts, we've got compliance-based reports. So if you're looking to adhere to compliance requirements, ISO 27001, I mentioned GDPR, SOX compliance, 
all other we've got other compliance requirements there then we've grouped together reports to help you uh adhere to those different access controls and similar there and speaking of access controls instead of having you work out exactly which reports you need to run we have mapping documents available as well so these documents will tell you exactly what reports you need to run uh, as i said access control if i need to look at access control for teleworkers we've got the different reports grouped together here based on the different data sources so if you've got an active directory there's four reports we need to run if you've got azure Oracle, Windows Server, they've each got one report that you need to run to help you to identify access controls using Netrix. I could take this top report, temporary user accounts, and just simply search for that report and say, Netrix, show me all users that have existed for less than 24 hours within my organization. And I'm going to go back as far as the last 12 months. And Netrix quickly identifies this gap. Uh, so again, we've got users that were created within Azure or within Active Directory. They were added and then removed in that short space of time. And I did say quickly, but it uh, looks like my labs decided to go a little bit slower running that. But what this report will show you is when the, who the user was, when they were created, who created them, and then when they were removed and who removed them, as well as actions on user. So I can see what groups they were made a member of and we can also take this information and say, actually, I want to see what did John Oliver do when he had access at the end of August last year? And that's where I can simply come here and put together a search. And I could just search on a particular data source, a particular time of day if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna say, show me everything from network devices, Office 365, databases, file servers, and similar there. So in the case of this user, we can see quite a bit of uh, read activity as well as some changes. And I might be interested to say, well, okay, this is a temporary user. What did they change while they had access? So we're gonna filter out some of the read activity. And there we go. We quickly reduce that report down to just particular types of changes. So I can see here files that were added, modified by the user. We can jump into that to see exactly what was modified, as in did the file size change or was it attributes that were changed, files that were removed and similar there. And these reports themselves, you can filter around a lot of different information. So you can actually build your own custom reports to look at. I'm looking at all file-based activity for users during certain times of the day. I'm looking at all non-admin related uh, changes uh, made within my or, or users not in my admin groups made to my network devices. Perhaps we want to look at VPN logins or something similar there. You can pull that information as well. And these custom reports can then be saved so that you can come back and access them as and when you need to. You can also subscribe to these activities. So if somebody gives you notice to say, I'm leaving the organization, uh, then you can give them, you can subscribe to the report to say, right, well, once a day, while they're working their two weeks notice, I want to see all file-based activity to see if they're making any significant changes or copying a lot of data or data that they shouldn't be. We can also create alerts, which lets Netrix then notify you if a particular type of change has been detected. So I've got one here around mass data changes on my file servers. All this alert does is it looks for where someone's modifying or making a change to files now I'm talking mass data. So when someone makes a change to any of my files, I'm not interested every time they change something, but if they change 10 files, or maybe we put that threshold up, 50 files in 60 seconds, I need to know about it. And what happens is you set that threshold. So this will trigger an alert if someone changes 50 files in uh, space of a minute. And I can then have a notification go out. So I can have recipients notified via email, or we could push an alert out to an external solution like an ITSM or a SIEM solution. Uh, you can also trigger a response action within Netrix. So you can have a scripted response from PowerShell or VBS. So you could actually say, we're going to, uh, we're going to script a response that moves this user into an OU that blocks their access. We're going to disable their access because they've triggered a high priority alert. Or the other option, which I quite like is risk scores. You can actually put a risk score on the user's profile. So we're not creating any notifications. We're not proactively making any changes. We're just capturing the activity 
so that over in our behavior anomalies dashboard, we can then see which users have a higher risk score than other users, than their peers. And I can look at this over a longer period of time and say, show me all alerts back to the start of winter. And I can see which users have the higher than average risk score and drill into their profiles to see exactly which alerts they triggered. And we could drill into those users to see uh, what actions they conducted to trigger those alerts there as well. So Netrix lets you establish, you know, what's considered normal activity, what's unusual activity. Let's go and review this. And of course, you can review these risk scores and say, actually, these activities were considered approved. So I can also remove them from their risk profile. And that will bring that user back in line with what's considered normal level of risk within Netrix itself. The last dashboard I wanted to show you was the risk assessment dashboard as well. So this is great for getting a very quick high level overview of uh, common risks that are identified within organizations. So we've got accounts with passwords that don't expire or passwords not required. You can quickly identify those accounts. Whose are those accounts? Uh, we can look at those inactive users. I showed you stale users earlier. We've got that built into the risk assessment. We can look at our security groups, admin groups or groups that have admin access or even empty security groups, you know, potential vulnerabilities there where we haven't done enough cleanup of our legacy data. Files and folders accessible to everyone or files and folder names that contain sensitive data. This isn't using classification. This is just looking at the file name and looking for terms like password, passport, visa, social security number. You can put in whatever phrases you want here to identify those terms. And then what you can do is you can review those files once they get flagged and highlighted. And if you approve that list, then, or if you see that there is a potential risk there, then you can set those thresholds as well. So once this loads, you can actually set and say, okay, this is the number of uh, files that have been identified as containing the word uh, passport or password within the, uh, within the file name or within the file path. Perhaps we're setting that up as a honeypot to identify users that are, are potentially sniffing around areas that they shouldn't be. Uh, and trying to access data that they shouldn't be accessing there. So you can set your threshold then to say 30 of these files are approved. Anything above 30 is considered a high level risk. And what happens there is that risk level then gets highlighted so that you can see that change when it occurs. Um, and of course, then with that report or with these risk levels, you can subscribe to this report so you can have this risk assessment emailed to you once a week, once a month, whatever schedule you want to set up. And once you've set your baselines, you can see, has anything exceeded the level of risk that we had already established? Is anything need a bit more review? Maybe we need to go back and search on activities. Maybe we need to go and investigate around those changes there to stay on top of those uh, potential gaps that are opening up within our infrastructure, within our environment. Let's go and review that and, and reduce those attack surfaces so that we can, uh, we can ensure that we have a secure environment. So I know that was a very much a whistle stop tour of Netrix. Um, the last piece I just wanted to talk on, I did touch on this during the demo, is that Netrix itself does connect with external sources, both for pulling data in so that we can report on actions and activities within from those external sources. But you can also push alerts, notifications, classifications out to external sources as well. So if you have already made a considerable investment or you're looking at the bigger picture of securing your data, not only at rest, but in motion, then uh, definitely you've got some options here. And this is where uh, you know our partners as well, like Multipoint, will be able to assist you with uh, choosing the best solution that fits your requirement. And of course, you'll have access to resources like myself who can help you with those integrations and how they may be implemented there. Hi, Dave. Yeah, Hello. Just, uh, just a small uh, thing from my side. We already have a question. Of course. Uh, does Netflix support integration with Semantic DLP? Can you comment on this one? Uh, with Semantic DLP, uh, I believe so. So it's, it's been a wee while. It's actually been several years since I've worked with uh, Semantic DLP solutions. As long as the DLP can read metadata within the files, within the file properties, um, then you're going to be okay. In my personal experience, most DLP solutions can look at the metadata. And what we can do within Netrix is we can create a custom field 
that matches the metadata field that the semantic solution is looking for. And we can also make sure if you've already got some identifiers that semantic uses, we can make sure that the, uh, the actual tags themselves match the format that's expected there as well. Um, so with all DLP solutions, that's how we integrate there is through the metadata itself. So when your solution like semantic is, is scanning these files that have been attached to emails, uploaded to cloud and similar, it's not having to read the content. It's just looking for these key identifiers within the documents and, uh, and, and of course, flagging those documents as confidential, internal use only, top secret, whatever classification you wish to apply there, uh, you can you can set that up and apply that through the Netrix interface. Okay, cool. I hope uh, that we answered this question. Also, Dave, just for a second, do you mind going back to our NDC um, interface? Of course. Yep. Mm, can we go to taxonomies uh, yeah. board? So, and a particular just, taxonomy. Um, can we show the, this um, countries list? Because I just wanted to uh, stress that we are working in this market for quite some time. So we have got prepared things for Greece, for Cyprus, for um, Israel. So already we can identify the sensitive information for these particular countries, if you're interested. That's yep. right. And within those documents as well, uh, as well, we, we have, you know, um, uh, translations and, and of course, multiple character sets are uh, also supported by Netrix. Uh, Dave, Evgenia, thank you very much. Just a moment. Uh, I, I would like I see. I see a, another new questions in the Q&A that you may help us to answer. Great, thank you. So yeah, so a question about um, uh, network devices. So, so are they included uh, in data analysis or dedicated collectors? So with most network devices, we use syslog to be able to pull activities uh, from those devices. And uh, we support a number of different manufacturers, so Cisco, Palo Alto, Juniper, Fortinet, and a few others. Uh, when we collect data from network devices, we've got four pre-configured reports. So configuration changes, logins to the device itself, uh, any hardware issues, so if the device can alert on hardware errors and similar, and of course, VPN logins uh, is being pulled there. But there's other information coming into Netrix that you can also customize those, those outputs. So if you want to look at, particularly we're looking at devices that are connecting from uh, you know, certain interfaces, uh, perhaps we've got uh, you know, multiple VLANs that have been enabled and you want to report or you want to segment your reports for different VLANs, you can do so there. To do so, it means we just go into these reports and we actually customize some of the filters. So a lot of this information with network devices can be customized there so that you can find the information that's relevant to, to your particular security need. Um, and just the other question there about uh, UAE and, and other countries there. If you can't see your country or can't see a particular data set uh, here within Netrix itself, these are being added regularly at the request of customers and partners as well. So if you do have a particular requirement, uh, then uh, you can have a chat to the team. All we do is take some samples of your data and we can then uh, create custom taxonomies so that we can identify documents um, that are relevant to you. I can say that about New Zealand, you know, we didn't have that out of the box. I've got some samples of data, which I was able to share with our product team. And they very quickly created some identifiers to look for those types of documents, clues within those documents. So definitely um, this, this list that we provide out of the box isn't fixed. It, it, is, um, it is constantly being added to, updated, um, and we can definitely uh, include additional countries and a different additional documentation that might be relevant to your organization's needs. Okay, Dave, another uh, reference that did not raise till now about the recording capabilities of the Netflix audit. A few words about it. Oh, sorry, could you just repeat that about the... 
recording capabilities of the of course audit yes yeah so so netrix auditor does have the ability as well to capture user activity here so on top of uh being able to record uh you know logins uh actions by users we can also record activity itself using video recordings now i may or may not have a recording available but let's have a quick look here so what we can see is we can see a user here so this session took place uh that's actually older let's sort by date we'll go to something a bit newer so we've got some sessions here and what you can see is the window that was opened by the user so these were um, modifications i was making to say to the bank account uh, credentials within within Netrix itself. So I've been recording my activities and you can jump into that particular action or activity using the recording feature. So there is the ability to be able to go and drill into actions initiated by users. Um, now you can trigger the recording based on the user. The recording could be triggered based on the group that they're a member of. So you could say if this user logging in is a member of our partner network, or maybe they are a non-administrator user, then they can get access here. Or you could just say it's the application. So it's only when a user opens, I don't know, Active Directory users and computers, you can say, then I want to start recording their activity. And you can then see all of the actions here. And of course, Within those recordings, as, as you want to jump through, I could jump straight through to a separate recording and quickly review exactly what was changed um, in that part there. You can see these recordings themselves are time stamped so that, uh, so that all of the actions are being captured there without you having to scroll through and locate that particular um, uh, timestamp itself within the uh, within the recording Spe especially handy if you've got 60 minute recordings or something there longer length sessions that you might want to be able to search through for particular changes that are taking place so yes netrix has this user activity recording feature available um, that's part of the windows server monitoring plan and currently the recordings do only work on windows servers but it is available there for anyone who wants to test that out as well okay thank you Super, super. I just, I just uh, want to add another. Uh, I want to mention the the great support of Netrix team. So please try uh, Netrix. We are here all for you. And in case you need some kind of support, so Netrix support team response time is like minutes or hours not days and weeks. So uh, try and buy. And by the way, I can tell you all everywhere that for the, the, the purchase, you know, the new purchases of Netrix through Multipoint, you will receive a red polo t-shirt branded by Netrix. This is my promise. Um, 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 this is my promise, so it's recorded. Try us, try our expertise, Netrix expertise, and you will, you will be in the safe side. So protect your environment, protect your IT, protect yourself, be safe with COVID-19, go and get vaccine, and see you in the next webinars. Again, thank you for your participation. Thank you, uh, Evgenia, appreciate it. Thank you, Dave, for great, Demo, I see already the feedbacks. And, and see you all soon, inshallah, you know, face to face. Uh, Jonathan, thank you, my colleague, for the support. I want, to, I want to thank also my manager, the CEO, Ricardo, for the support. Jenny, from the marketing. And a special thanks to Nikos, Vishal, and Naresh. Thank you all, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank have you guys. a great day. And have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. That's a